good morning everyone we are back with another impact chess for saturday session today we have fashion sir with us and this session is on how to as a sales force interview he is 18 years of work experience and 12 years of in sales force ecosystem and 15x certified sales force hi this is pravin Goli, I am certified Salesforce administrator and working in TCS, and also one of the Salesforce mentor in K University and volunteer of New Delhi Salesforce Developer Group. These are the in initiatives taken by New Delhi Salesforce Developer Group. These are Twitter handles and hashtag, and you can also join New Delhi Salesforce Developer Group in Trailblazer community. This today we have joined in, in Impact Salesforce Saturday session. This is our virtual session organized by New Delhi Salesforce Developer Group. As I said before, you can find these past and upcoming sessions in the Sales New Delhi Salesforce Developer Group website. And also, you can register from our website. Talent Central is a again initiative which is taken up by New Delhi Salesforce Developer Group. It is same like Naukari and Indeed. It acts as bridge in between Salesforce aspirants and students. Recently, New Delhi Salesforce Developer Group started new initiative. Let's implement. Here they are connecting their mentors and mentees with the mentorship central. They will also get their hands-on experience with will be guided under the mentors. Journey to Salesforce is an initiative taken by Salesforce India Developer Group Relations. These are the top contributors who help in ecosystem, Salesforce ecosystem to organize the session to share the details of every session on social media. Thanks to our sponsors Cloud One, Cloud One and Gray Ops. Thank you so much, guys, for joining today's session. I hope all will have great session. And thank you over to Prashant sir. Uh, thanks, uh, Praveen. Let me know if I can share my screen. Give me a second. Just give me one second. And Praveen, can you confirm if you can see my screen? Yes, sir, we can see. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, so thank you so much everyone for joining. Um, in this particular session, we'll talk about how to ace a Salesforce interview. Uh, before starting, a quick introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Prashant Ambition. I have over 18 years of experience, most of it in the salesforce.com space, uh, primarily playing leadership or consulting roles. Prior to Salesforce, I had some experience in management consulting, uh, finance and program management. And uh, before that, I did my MBA at IM Bangalore. Uh, my LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Trailblazer handles are provided here. Feel free to connect with me, uh, follow me. I also co-host a website called salesforcecouple.com. Um, we've got a lot of articles there and blogs. We'll also be uploading some uh, articles related to this session and the session I took previously. So feel free to go there and uh, learn about Salesforce. We also have some business scenarios where you can test your knowledge as well. So just to get started, um, the context of this particular session is about getting a job in the Salesforce ecosystem. Any uh, process of getting a job will have a job opening with the typical job description. You'll get shortlisted for an interview or rounds of interviews, and then uh, hopefully get a job offer. Last week, we had a session which was focused on the first part of that journey. That is from a job opening to getting shortlisted for an interview. Uh, we have the recording of that in the New Delhi user group uh, YouTube channel as well. So feel free to go through that if you are not able to join the session live. And uh, today's session, 
will be focused on the second half of the journey. So assuming you've got shortlisted for the interview, how do you ace that Salesforce interview? And uh, over my uh, many years of experience, I've had the, the fortune to have conducted probably over 500 interviews. And through that, what I wanted to do was assimilate some sense of tips and tricks and uh, what you can do to make sure you're presenting your best self when you appear for a Salesforce interview and hope you can get something valuable out of this. The agenda for today's session will start with looking at this from a hiring company's viewpoint. I always like to think of either the interview process or the shortlisting process, start from what the company is looking for, because that's where you want to plan how you want to present yourself. We'll talk a fair bit about preparing for the interview beforehand, and then also preparing for some general and Salesforce questions. And then specifically on the, on the interview day, some do's and don'ts, and then uh, some tips. And of course, finally, we'll open it up to question and answers. So to start off from a company's uh, viewpoint, what are they looking for when uh, they call you for an interview? So when a company or a hiring manager or recruiter calls you for an interview, they're looking for two specific things. Firstly, they want to validate your skills and experience. They want to see if you have the knowledge which you uh, show in your resume. Uh, they want to see what is the actual experience you have on the projects you've worked on, how it pertains to you having used your knowledge in real life scenarios. So essentially they're looking at what can the candidate do for the job, what they bring to the table. And then finally, the second part, they look at a personality fitment, soft skills, attitude, cultural alignment. Right? Will the candidate fit in the team? So one is what you bring to the table and whether you will fit in the team. And if you attended my previous session, I had the same um, point there is how long do they take to decide whether to shortlist or rather uh, finalize a particular candidate, right? So in the interview, typically the first impression uh, is formed in less than three minutes. The initial discussions where you're introducing yourself, uh, when you have a few uh, couple of questions in, uh, the interview already would have formed some opinion about you. And then within the first 15 minutes, whether it's technical or non-technical, the particular hiring person, the interviewer would have already made a fairly concrete decision on whether to hire or not hire you. And then uh, it takes about less than 30 minutes to finalize that particular decision. But in most cases, like your shortlisting process, uh, you will generally see that the first impression holds good. So if the, in the initial part of the interview, if the recruiter feels that you're a, a strong candidate, generally that carries forward and that decision stays. If they feel that you're not good, then mostly that continues and you get rejected. So in the whole process, it's always the first impression which makes a lot of difference. Of course, it can change during the course of an interview. You have time to uh, make amends if you don't make a great start. But the first impression is really, really important. So with this background, let's look at what should you do if you've got a call for interview? What is the starting point? So the most important thing to remember that the interview process or the actual interview itself is just a part of that journey. What you do upfront before to prepare for the interview really builds you up for that interview. So half the battle actually happens even before the interview starts, how much you can prepare. In my perspective, there are four areas you should prepare from. First is, about the company. So if a particular company calls you for an interview, read up about the company. You'll be surprised how many people come without knowing what the company does. Read up about it, understand what the company does, when was it founded, what are the service areas it is in, uh, what are the different clients it's, uh, it works for. And also if you can find out something about what the company has done in the Salesforce space. So sometimes you get case studies. Sometimes when you Google the company name and Salesforce, you will see some project information, right? So a lot of this information is available publicly, easy for you to go and read up about. There's really no excuse not to do that research. So find out about it, read the news about the company. If something recent happened, right? If the company acquired another company or they start a new service line, these are discussion points. If they bring it up and you already have read about it, it makes a great impression. Also look about the people and culture. Right. What's, what's the type of people who are there? You can definitely find a lot of profiles in LinkedIn. You can uh, you will read a lot of people who have shared stories about working in the, in the particular company. Definitely go and read about that. And most importantly for you, 
to understand if you are a fitment in that company look at reviews like places like glassdoor uh, you have a lot of forums where people share their thoughts about having worked in the company and of course this is not just from a salary compensation perspective but very importantly from a work environment and culture perspective see remember when you're going for an interview it is a two way process it's not just that the company is hiring you it's you are looking for a job so does the job suit you as well not it's not just that uh, do, are you a fitment for the job so the first part of that research should be about the company start with that company in mind next is for the job right now they're looking for a particular job how will you start preparing for this so the first thing is to revise the job description now you would have looked at that job description at the time of preparing your resume and or you're filling in an online form but look at it again like what are they actually looking for make sure you that is very clear in your head uh, when you start and go before the interview itself now during the interview of course there'll be discussions and they may talk more about it but make sure you do your prep up front with the information you're already provided similarly there'll be case studies or there may be similar openings for jobs so if they're looking for a developer for a particular project they may have other openings for testers or administrators as well right so when you look at similar job openings from the company you may get a sense of okay this is the big project they're looking for these are the type of roles they have openings for so it gives you a good sense of picture of what it's uh, really out in the market for so with this sort of half of the circle what it helps you is to prepare from a understanding of where the company is coming from what sort of people they are looking for the next part comes from your side right against your skills now based on your understanding about the company and the job description look at what you bring to the table if it's a particular developer skill set with specific um, tools you need to be proficient in map those particular skills right look at those these are the skills which are which which i have which which would be most useful for the company identify those in your resume strike those prepare for those map key projects which may be relevant so if they're talking about a support project and you've uh, worked on a support project make sure you are very clear on what that project is you are able to speak to it so what you're now doing as a part of the preparation is you've done your research about the company about the job now you're seeing what you bring to the table against that requirement and start identifying those and focusing on those fourth part which uh, which you should be very very careful about especially now in in today's world is the logistics and environment and sort of general prep no when i say logistics and environment because especially now that a lot of interviews or most of the interviews are happening virtually you are not actually going in person you have to do you have to prepare from a logistics pers perspective that make sure you have a good internet connection make sure your uh, whichever app you're using so zoom if you're using it for the first time it might do some installation right so make sure you're you have all that set up make sure that your phone is turned to silent mode uh, make sure you're not using your same phone data for your internet because if a call comes in it might get disconnected right so all these small small things be careful about make sure you're sitting in a well lit place you have uh, you are not having any background noise or at least you're able to minimize the background noise small small things but if you have these prepared up front uh, make sure that will really help you right and even to the small things like when you have your meal or when uh, uh, say someone comes at your house at that time so if you have someone else who's taking care of all that and you can just focus on your interview that really helps of course if it's an in person interview you have to worry about logistics to make sure you get on time what is the route you're going to take and things like that the second part of general preparation is not specifically against your skills but general reading and there are a few things which you have to do in this one is you're in the salesforce world and a lot of things like if you just read what's coming in from salesforce over the last year you will see that every few weeks there are some major announcements coming in right the acquisitions you've got new products coming in products getting renamed uh, certain things getting merged right so when you keep reading about these read the latest news at least of the last 2 3 months to know what has happened in salesforce where it is moving right that shows that you are aware of what is happening in the salesforce world you are really involved and engaged with what's happening very important the other thing also you should do as part of your general prep is especially if you have one or two certifications look at the last two three release notes one of the common questions you may come up with is okay what's your your um, 
admin certified, what, what are the few latest features which have come in as part of uh, Salesforce admin tool set, right? So you should be aware of it. Uh, it speaks to what you have uh, done. And obviously as part of your maintenance, you would have done the prep of the release notes. You would have done the, the trailhead modules to complete and maintain your certification. So you're expected to know about it. So there's no excuse to say, oh, wait, I don't know. Right. Now, all these things um, actually is a lot of work. It's not just sit for an hour and it gets done. You take your time, systematically go through these four quadrants, if you may. Uh, my recommendation is to go in the sequence I presented this, because if you start with the company and the job, when you are doing the other two, you will be able to focus on areas which are pertinent to what the company is looking for, right? And of course, you yourself bring a lot to the table, but this part of the pre-interview prep will go a long way in one, building your confidence when you appear for the job interview. And secondly, you will be sort of preempting a lot of questions which may come. So this is a very important part of, of your journey of acing an interview. Now, the next thing is preparing for general questions. Now, if as you start attending more and more interviews, you'll see that there are certain questions which often get repeated. First, you will hear is tell me about yourself, right? Very often, very, very often, um, interviewers would maybe give a quick introduction about themselves, maybe talk a little bit about the company or the project, but inadvertently they'll ask you, okay, tell me something about yourself. It's a very open-ended question. And if you're not prepared, what happens is you will start meandering about the place and it'll show that you're really not answering this in a structured manner. So my recommendation here is prepare for this particular question in a couple of ways. One, you have a stock answer. And when I say a stock answer is if you don't know anything and that really is your first question out of the box from the interviewer, you know what you're going to say. And when they ask you about yourself, the intent is not to read your resume. You don't go and say everything what is there already on your resume, but build around it, right? Give a full structure. You can go in chronological order, but don't, don't have a long drawn out 10 minute answer. Be crisp, be to the point, two, three minutes, and make sure you're highlighting those key areas which the company is looking for, right? So remember when you do the prep work, you've understood about the company, about the job opportunity, and you've also mapped it against your skills. Now, this is an area where you can lead the discussion. So when, when someone asks you to tell about yourself, it is, it is really for you to set the stage saying, I, this is the background you have. These are some areas you're strong in, and these are some areas you've added real value. So you can start driving some of the discussion in your strong points using this as the answer but be prepared for it. And the best way for preparing for an interview is to actually say out the answer. You write it down if you feel comfortable, you speak it out if you, if you are comfortable, but practice saying it out from the beginning to the end many times. Once you say three, four times, it'll come out very naturally. If you, are, if you just have a structure in your head and you haven't actually prepared for it, you will see that when you're saying, you will start stopping yourself and thinking what you're supposed to say next. So that's your stock answer. The answer you prepare yourself when asked uh, what, uh, what you do, what is about, what is your background. There is a second part of how you should prepare yourself is have some points which you're going to cover, but also keep some points flexible. And uh, that comes with a little bit of practice. So for example, if an interview, uh, the interviewer gives you some background about the project and they tell you, this is the scenario they're in, they're just building up a new team, and uh, everybody's new, they're gonna hire five more people and so on and so forth. If you have worked on a project which has a similar scenario set up where you're building, it started with a completely new team, you had to really work together, know each other and gel as a team. Be prepared in your, after talking some main points to cover that particular project you worked on a little more detail. So you have to think on your feet, right? You have to listen to what they're saying think on your feet and slightly modify that portion of your answer, which is relevant to what they've talked about. So this, this is a little bit tricky, but if you're able to achieve this, where you're able to customize your, um, where your summary about yourself by expanding on some of the areas which they've already set a context in, you give a much more powerful answer and automatically that first impression becomes incredibly stronger. 
Next is talk through the projects. So you've worked on some projects, more likely than not, they may pick a couple and ask you to tell about that. What did you do in the project? What was your contribution? What is your role? So on and so forth. Practice some of these answers even before the interview. Just talk to them. If someone asks you about the project, how would you describe it? So again, all this you should talk through. Don't just write it down or just think through it. Talk through it. It becomes much more difficult when you're talking. And if you do it a few times, it's much more easier when you get at the interview stage. Third is identify your areas of strength and weaknesses. It's a very cliche question, which doesn't come up very often nowadays is what are your strengths and weaknesses? And this is not just personality based. This is also from a Salesforce technical skill set perspective. What do you bring to the table? Focus on your strengths. Weaknesses may be areas of improvement. You don't need to really go and say that I, I'm not good at this. What you should be focusing on, these are the areas which I bring to the table. But have these very clearly identified and mapped out in your mind before the interview itself. Another very common question which will come up is, where do you see yourself three years from now, five years from now, and so on? It's okay if you don't know. It's okay if you don't know, but it's not okay if you don't have any plan at all. Right? It's okay if saying that I'm an admin right now, I may be looking at building some developing skill sets and probably move into a developer role. You may say that I'm, I'm st also still open to going on the consultant line. Or you may say that I'm really not too much of a technical guy. Once I get into a bit of admins, uh, admin work, I want to get into a little bit of um, delivery management, project management stream. Right? It's fine to keep yourself open, but it's not fine to have not thought about it at all. Right? So have that answer ready have it clearly defined. Also map out at least in the next one year, what do you plan to achieve? That should be clear. If five years you're not sure, you still have some open paths, that's okay. But if in the next six to 12 months, if you don't know what you're going to do, where you want to improve yourself, then that means you haven't put in enough time thinking about your professional development. So prepare for this with that in mind. Another very important thing which you can do as part of general uh, preparation is uh, have mentors or um, anyone senior to you do some mock interviews. And in fact, even someone, uh, a peer of yours or even someone junior can do a mock interview because all they need to do is ask questions. It's easier to ask questions as compared to give the answers, right? But once you do a mock interview in an interview simulated environment, when you're actually going to the interview, it, it becomes much easier. And this is very useful, especially if you're a, a fresh out of college, you haven't attended a lot of interviews or you have limited work experience. This will really help. And all this super, super important is, is practice, 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 practice. And I keep saying this is because many times the amount of time you spend on actually just saying out these answers, preparing yourself, talking about some of these areas, it really reflects on your confidence when you come to the interview and makes a huge difference. It really shows. So spend some time preparing for it. A lot of these general answers will be applicable for any of the interviews you're going to do. So you can reuse a lot of this, but if you go through this exercise a few times, you will see yourself uh, really gaining uh, leaps and bounds. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about how to prepare for Salesforce questions, but before that, um, I put together something called a knowledge onion. Okay. And this is specific uh, in many areas, but very specific also for the Salesforce environment. And when I say the knowledge onion, I say there are three levels of knowledge you may possess. There'll be one set of things which you know practically. These are things which you know very well and you have experience working on. So if you are an ad admin work and you've actually done uh, admin projects for a couple of years, so you're really thorough about this. There could be an area where you know theoretically, where you have read about this, you have taken a particular certification, you've done uh, uh, modules and trailheads and trail mixes, and you've earned a number of badges, done super badges and so on, but you don't have actual practical experience, but you know the area pretty well. And the last area, of course, are things which you do not know. You may have heard about it, but you don't know much about it. Now, this is very important for Salesforce because the do not know is huge for most of us because Salesforce is such a vast landscape. We, there are so many things to know. It's, it's really impossible to know. If not, uh, it's impossible to know everything, right? And 
what happens also is the no practically part becomes very small the reason is a lot of projects we work on would be long duration projects they'd be focused on particular cloud and so if you're working in marketing cloud project for uh, two three years that becomes your area of core expertise that is the area you know practically you've worked hands-on you've been dealing in and out of you but because you've worked on that you have not say worked on some of the areas like um, the field service lightning or service cloud or uh, something else right so those areas you may have read up about you may know theoretically but your no practically is generally very limited and you don't have a lot of control over, especially early on in your career, you may not uh, really be able to pick and choose which project you're working on. Now with that in mind, right? How does this apply to our preparation for the interview? Now, let's start with no practically. So what you know about is your core strength. You want to make sure you score a hundred year. This is, this is an area where uh, you're gonna do very well in the interview. So prepare for this by under identifying what are the key contributions you've done? What is your value add you've brought to the particular projects you've worked on? And check for any gaps. So for example, if you've worked on a sales card project, you may have done a lot of things, but you may not have worked on some specific areas of sales card because the project or, or the business use cases did not ask for it. Make sure you cover that. The reason being is then you can say, I know sales cloud fully. So go to that particular module, which you are really good at, make sure you know it fully because you don't want to have show any gaps there. You want to really show this is something I want to lead the interview to. This is where I want to have a lot of discussion. So prepare for it from that angle. What you bring to the table, your key contributions, what you've achieved from that, and also if there are any gaps. The next is what you know theoretically. If you have learned about certain things, you've got certifications, you've got um, badges in trailhead and so on. What you want to do are two things. One is you map it to some of the scenarios which you think. So if you've learned about a flow, think about scenarios where that can be applied. Now you may not have actually used flow in your project, but if you're able to say, I have done this and I know this uh, well, uh, and I know that in particular use case, I can actually use this knowledge, it adds value. Right. So instead of saying that I've done this module where I built this process builder to do so and so, uh, it's more powerful when you say that I have working knowledge of process builder. I know how it can apply to specific business scenarios to meet particular business requirements like so and so, which means that even though you are you don't have a, an actual experience on this, but you know when and how to use this. Also, it's important for these things to uh, read some of the latest release notes. And the reason I say this is. If the interviewer realizes you've not worked on this, but you know this area theoretically, the questions will become more theoretical. And one of the most common things will be about some of the latest features which are available in this, um, some of the best practices and so on. So make sure you are up to speed on those areas. And the third thing is something which you don't know much about. So let's say Heroku. I have no idea. I have never worked on it. If an interview question comes on this, I don't know what to do you don't have to prepare. It's perfectly okay not to know that, but at least read up where is, what is Heroku, right? Okay, what does it do? Just, if you just go to the, the Heroku page on Salesforce, you will probably see a couple of uh, pages and a few paragraphs of list listings about it, or you go to some overview um, module in Trailhead and just read up what, what is that? Right? So where does it get applied to? Just get a high level understanding so that you know where it fits in in that particular overall Salesforce landscape. So that's how you want to understand um, wh where your knowledge on if you may, lies, how it is laid out, what your areas are and prepare accordingly, right? And with that concept in mind, let's look at some, how to prepare for some Salesforce questions as well. Now preparing for Salesforce questions starts from really your job description. So let's say your job description has uh, asked for things like user administration. Right. So if it, you look for those keywords in the job description where they are looking for particular skill sets. So if it's an admin uh, particular um, job opening and they have mentioned user administration, you can probably think through that they will ask things around profiles, permission sets, maybe role hierarchy, or maybe even user data load. Right. So identify some of these things around that particular word. And uh, prepare for things like, okay, there could be questions around what's the difference between profiles and permission sets. Where would you use which, right? How does role hierarchy impact record visibility in Salesforce? 
or what are the considerations you would do when you're doing user data load? Typical question. So once you've picked up that keyword, you know some of the key concepts around it, you can build what, what sort of questions would come and have your answers prepared. So that's how you would prepare for Salesforce questions. So similarly, if there's something on Apex triggers, you may have on types of triggers, some scenarios for some pseudo code. And of course, uh, many interviews ask about best practices and so on, right? So again, if you have actual working examples on these, perfect, you are able to relate to it. If you just have theoretical knowledge, map it to that and also be able to talk through some of the areas where it may actually get used. Right? So all this work which you're looking at, which I talked through till now is preparing for Salesforce uh, questions and interviews. So this, this is about specifically on Salesforce. Uh, we talked earlier about some general questions, but all of this is leading up to the interview. How do you get prepared? Now, before we go to get to the actual interview, just a quick um, recap of how an interview process ha happens in most companies. There are obviously variations based on the company and their particular process they follow. But by and large, they, there'll be an HR interview, either at the beginning or at the beginning and end, or maybe at the end, right? Followed by a technical interview. This could be one or multiple rounds. Generally, they will have a discussion and some sort of assignment or you will have to do some live coding or demo or um, write the pseudo code or so on, right? To actually test your knowledge hands-on live. And then generally there'll be a final interview. And the reason I, I map this process out is each of these look for specific things and what you should also prepare accordingly. So for HR interview, generally they'll give you an idea about the company, the role designation, salary, and so on. So for that particular round, be prepared for this. Make, be prepared on what you make sure you want right about the company. You understand what sort of role you are looking for, or what sort of salary you want to negotiate with. From a technical discussion perspective, it's a deep dive into your skills and experience. So this is really the, the, the meat of where the interview takes place, where they're going to check whether you really can do the job, uh, prepare for scenario-based questions, prepare for hands-on exercises. So think of um, be really ready for such things when you're coming for that particular round or rounds of interview. And the final interview is generally, and especially if you go on to a final round, it means you're, you've been vetted by and large. So final interview is generally to make sure they're not made any fundamental mistake in um, proceeding you to that final level. It's more of a personality fitment. Um, there could be also discussions around, okay, where do you see yourself, especially if the final interviewer is a, a senior manager or a leader in the company, right? So this process generally is followed by and large by most companies. They have, of course, some variations in the order and the number of steps involved, uh, but all these points generally get covered at some point or the other in your overall interview cycle with a particular organization. So as you know, which interview is happening, what sort of people you wanna talk with, uh, be prepared for that interview from that particular perspective as well. And just before the interview, just to make sure some basics. Now I had something similar for uh, for the resume checklist as well. Some do's and don'ts. Let's start with the do's. Right? For an interview, be punctual, be on time. And ideally be a few minutes early. Don't be late. And especially in the world of uh, trying to connect and poor internet connectivity, try to join early, take that into uh, account. Have a formal dress code. A um, lot of companies do not have formal dress codes. Um, definitely they may wear their t-shirts to office, but when you're appearing for the interview, at least be in business casuals, at least be at least the equal or one level more formal than the dress code they follow. Uh, very important. The appearances do matter how you present yourself uh, as a person is, is equally important as your knowledge, right? Third is cross-cultural awareness. And especially for uh, freshers or people with less, less experience or who have not gone uh, to different locations, be aware of the differences uh, which are there, especially when you're talking uh, with across different countries. So as an example, when you're using specific words in India, in English, those words have a completely different meaning in US. And then the way certain things are said in US is different from something, uh, certain things are said in say UK. So be aware of some of those cross-cultural uh, differences 
um, of course, details of all these you can very easily Google and learn and prepare, but but be aware of it. It's very important because you may use certain words, uh, certain words like prepone don't even exist in the uh, in the dictionary. It's not an actual word, but it's used so commonly in India, and people think that's an actual word. Uh, if you use that in many of the other con uh, countries, they will think that um, they won't understand what it means. Right? So be aware of some of those specific words you're using. Showcase value. You are not just um, talking about I did this, I did this. You also want to talk about how you added some value, how you contributed to the success of a project. Uh, so that's that's really a focus of the interview. So make sure you keep that in mind whenever you are having that interview. One of the most important things during the interview is to engage. And remember, the interview process is not just about the company seeing are you a good candidate. It is also about you seeing is this a good company for me. It's a two-way street. It is not a one-way discussion. Even though a lot of questions come from the other side of the table, engage, right? Make sure that you're fully aware, you're fully tuned into the discussion. You're talking both ways, right? And one of the most important ways to achieve this is to talk as if you're already an employee. And when I say as if you're already an employee, what I mean is think as if you are working in the company how would you have that discussion? Now, this creates a completely different mindset if you think this way. And I say this is important because, because what this shows to the person who's taking your interview is that you really want to be a part of the organization. Now, you don't say that. I'm, obviously, you're not literally talking as if you're an employee, but you think in your mind, how do you behave as if you were already employed there? And the person interviewing you was, say, your manager or your colleague, right? So if you put that mindset and start having the discussion, you will find that you have a lot more things to talk about. You will be much more excited and much more involved in that entire discussion. And it shows, it, it will definitely show. And with that in mind, what it will also help you understand is, is this company right for you? Now, sometimes you'll be taking, uh, attending interviews where you will see that this really is not the place I want to work. Not because the company is bad or anything, it's just that it's not a great fit for me. So if you start approaching the interview and you behave in the interview in this particular fashion, it will help you make that decision in a much better way. So this is a very important thing to keep in mind when you are attending the interview. Now, on the other side, of course, there are a bunch of things you should not do. Don't make lighthearted comments. Right? You should not, uh, again, keep in mind all the time, this is a professional environment. Many times interviewers will be lighthearted, they'll joke. You know, of course, you can uh, say a joke, but you have to uh, be very aware of what you're saying. You should be very correct. So ideally, you don't want to say anything lighthearted. Uh, you want to keep it very professional. Um, and it shows, it'll show as a, as a positive if you're keeping yourself and conducting yourself professionally. Don't be critical of your current or past employers. Right? If you've worked somewhere and uh, for some uh, reason, you don't want to work in a particular company because of certain things which they did, which was not correct. Don't be critical of that. And what that means is it shows two ways, right? Uh, one, it shows that you are you have you are very comfortable in placing the blame on someone else, and secondly, your loyalty factor to a company which has given you employment. Um, is not that strong. And then if, if a company is hiring you, they may think that, okay, they may talk bad, bad about me as well. If this person is capable of talking bad about someone else. Now you may be completely justified, but you want to phrase whatever you're saying in a very constructive, clear, objective way without being critical. That's very important. It shows your attitude. It shows the way you conduct yourself. And it, if you can come up as a as a positive, stronger person, if you're describing a scenario where uh, something was unfair, it, it will only make you come out stronger. Um, don't not ask any questions. And what I mean is do ask any questions. Make sure you ask questions. Uh, again, goes back to that this is a two way street. Um, in, and it's good to be prepared for some questions uh, for the company. Uh, but Generally, at the end of the interview, they will ask if you have any questions for them. Uh, the questions should try to have questions which are related to the project, 
related to your career growth related to some of that and not just okay what are the next steps and so on as a general rule i don't recommend people asking how the interview went i've had a few people when i'm conducting interviews at the end they'll ask me uh, my feedback on the interview now asking feedback is a very good thing now in a general if i'm working in a uh, in a company and i want to get feedback from my manager that's great i should do that but in an interview context if someone asks me how the interview went as an interviewer i will be a little surprised that the person already does not realize how the interview went you should be you should already know this went okay this did not go and really the interview medium is not the medium to gather feedback you should really be aware of it so it's really doesn't give any particular value and one more important thing to be aware of is in this happens especially when you are early in your career or you're really a little desperate looking for a job don't overcommit right uh, if if there's a requirement that you have to work um, night shift for example and in on your personal front that really will become a stretch for you don't go and say yes i'll do it no problem and later you find that it's not working for you so that's just an example but what i mean is whenever you're saying yes to something be aware of what you're saying yes to um, so think about what you're talking don't just go in just for the sake of getting the job uh, say yes to something which you cannot honor going down the line and uh, most important don't fake it right it all this comes all your um, selection process everything happens if you have the skills the personality the the knowledge experience to deliver for the job uh, you cannot pretend to be something that you are not it shows very quickly it will not help you in your career because even if you get selected um, it gets very easily found out and most seasoned interviewers will be able to realize if you're faking something pretty quickly so don't fake it be yourself you don't your your greatest strength your greatest asset your greatest thing which you bring to the table is is you Uh, just be yourself be what you're comfortable with um, of course in a very professional context and that will uh, make it easy for you going forward and that is really what companies are looking for they're looking for that honesty and integrity to who you are okay now with all this let us sort of come towards uh, wrapping this up with some interview day tips okay now during the interview one of the key things you should do and now one of the most important things which people do in the interview is talk but i feel even more important is to listen listen to the interview as you are listening to what they are saying what they are asking when they are talking about the project about the company they are asking questions or they are reacting to your answers you will start getting a sense of what they are looking for so pay attention to what they are saying listen to those words phrase your answers to make sure you're matching something if you are talking for length on something and they are seeming are not very interested in hearing that pay attention to their body language right it will make a huge difference bit because it will help you sort of course correct as you are going through that interview it's not it's not a huge skill to learn we use it every day in our conversations with our friends with our family we listen to what they're saying if someone's upset we realize automatically if someone's happy with uh, something you you get to get a sense of that it's exactly that thing just extend it to the interview in that professional context but be very aware of what they're looking for next is think before talking you're not this is not rapid fire round if you have a question being asked and you need a moment to think and prepare your answer take a moment and pause for a second uh, structure your answer in your mind and answer of course don't take 3 minutes um, and uh, take that long but but definitely take that small moment to to consider what you're going to say before you say it and uh, sometimes that makes a, a big difference on the way you present your answer next is ask clarifications if required uh, of course uh, especially on the scenario based questions um there may be uh, things which are not said there may be assumptions which are not really presented ask those clarifications if there's something you did not hear clearly uh, if the accent wasn't clear you were not able to follow what they said the connection was uh, was wrong was not really good make sure you ask those clarifications and take your time 
uh, this is this is your moment in the interview to show what you have done to summarize and present to to companies what you can offer them and how you can help them succeed and thereby grow your career uh, enjoy that moment take your time and be crisp clear and precise in your answers uh, we're not looking for long winded answers we're not looking for a huge 3 uh, minute discourse on one small thing you did be able to pre- present Uh, your answer in a crisp clear precise fashion and some of those prep work which you have done as before the interview that will definitely come into play when when you're trying to build the skill and the very important thing very very important thing is be calm a very easy way to look at this is have that perspective we are all human beings now if you are getting interviewed by a, a senior director or ceo of a company or you are getting interviewed by someone probably uh, less experienced than you it doesn't matter you're all human beings right we all have our own problems our own happiness um, everything is there if the interview something happens say the internet connection goes bad or you said something which is completely uh, wrong uh, and you need to correct yourself or for whatever reason something is not working out correctly in that interview take a deep breath right it's 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 not the end of the world it will definitely uh, show in a huge positive light if you can remain calm under pressure so don't lose that calm uh, keep that perspective in mind uh, go with a very happy and um, i'd say fun mindset in the sense that you are enjoying what you're doing you're enjoying the work you're doing and don't go with the with with all the burden and tension and stress of oh i have to clear this interview you will clear the interview especially if you are uh, if you have what it needs to deliver to the job just just be be comfortable and calm in the situation and uh, think on your feet uh, when i say think on your feet is it it sort of summarizes all these together uh, right you are listening to the uh, interview you're thinking before you're talking so keep yourself keep your mind agile don't go with a particular mindset that i'm only going to say these things or this is exactly how i'm going to answer certain things and uh, this is the way i'm going to approach this if you may hear something completely different in the interview and you have to now change your answer right but be able to think on your feet and be able to um, present yourself in the best possible manner is very important in the interview now with all that i just want to thank you all that sort of summarizes what a what i feel would help Uh, each of you succeed in in trying to come for a particular interview i know there's a lot to cover and many of these small points actually need a lot of preparation and trying out but i think if you put even a few of these in effect when you prepare for interview uh, the next time you are at the interview table you'll do a much much uh, better job and you'll be really proud of uh, being able to present yourself in in the best possible manner you are and really get your dream job so with that um, just want to thank everyone and of course opened up any questions uh, anyone may have let me do one thing let me just stop my share and go to the chat can you open my video as well just give me a second perfect uh, i'm looking at the chat window or any questions okay so then and which should be the first certificate as for a developer role hmm. uh, this is uh, uh, of course not very relevant for that particular session but uh, generally um, if you go to trailhead you will see different career paths uh, and you will see that mostly you will have a pd1 as a certification typically which is said for the developer role um, generally i would also recommend taking admin certification at some point early in your career but those one of those two idly pd1 would be a starting point uh, and the reason for that is those are very foundational certifications so you should uh, look at that uh, and i definitely recommend admin as well for most people because you want to know when you want to write code versus when you don't want to write code but uh, that would be my recommendation does that answer your question dhananjay any other questions Just feel free to unmute and ask it will save me some reading time
Okay. Praveen, can we give everyone the ability to unmute if needed? No, no. No, we can't. Okay. Sorry, you guys will have to type your question, it looks like. Any other questions? Did I miss anything? Okay, um, Praveen, it looks like there are no questions. Uh, so thank you once more to, to you and uh, the New Delhi user group for hosting me um, second time in a row. Oh, wait, there's a question coming up. So I'll just uh, wait for that to come. Question, this is one yeah. question. Yeah. Forgot. So would I have kept focus? Oh, okay. Um, so one question is where I should focus to be a Salesforce consultant. Currently I'm working as an admin, right? So Salesforce consultants have, there are, there are a few consultant streams which you can go, for example, sales cloud, service cloud, uh, and so on, right? So you have to, first of all, make sure you know working as an admin, the difference between an admin and a consultant is really the application of knowledge, right? So in admin, you've, learned the basics in and out of how Salesforce platform works, what's available out of the box. From a consultant perspective is you're really now thinking from the business user's perspective. So I have a business problem. How do I solve that business problem using what is available in Salesforce? So for example, if you're picking up Sales Cloud, um, when you read about Sales Cloud, you want to look at scenarios where this gets applied. So if you study for some of those certifications, for example, or if you look at some of those trailheads which are relevant to those uh, consultant uh, certification, you will see a lot of the prep work goes in looking at a business scenario and uh, trying to solve for it. Now, from a focus perspective, I would recommend this from an admin side, which areas you're most comfortable in and possibly also what sort of uh, job opportunities or roles you have worked on. So if you've worked on project, which is sales cloud, then definitely I would recommend looking at a sales cloud consultant sort of a role. And for that, it's good to look at some, understand some of the sales business processes, uh, prepare for the, the consultant certifications. Uh, and there's a lot of material, of course, available on Trailhead and, uh, and now a lot of blogs and uh, material which is there, which you can prepare accordingly for. But the key difference, of course, is the jump from looking at it from a technical side to a business side and bridging that gap, right? Hope that answers that question. Oh, next one is, I'm, an, I'm a beginner to Salesforce. How can I showcase someone with experience uh, or as you told, should not fake it? Okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, from for someone who's a beginner to Salesforce and especially if you've got some um, skill set in another particular technology, obviously it's not a direct translation, right? Um, so first, so remember when I talked about the knowledge onion, uh, your no practically part of Salesforce becomes almost nothing because you've not done actual project work. And there would be a segment where you have, you know, theoretically, right? So first you get that very clear. These are the things I know theoretically in Salesforce very well, which I've studied and try to relate it to potentially some of the projects of work you've done. So if you've done say support work, right? In, in Salesforce uh, support, what sort of things could come? So if you're doing say user administration, if someone has a password reset issue, they cannot see a particular record. Um, there's some report or dashboard which needs uh, they need help with. How will you help them with that, right? So with your theoretical knowledge, try to see how this will map. So what you bring to the table as say an L2 support analyst with four years experience in, in what you described is you've worked that environment where you have people coming to you with problems, you've helped solve that problem. That's a skill set. That's definitely a very powerful skill set which you've acquired. Many times you'll be working with high priority tickets and you have to turn it around very fast. Many times you'll work with multiple stakeholder teams. Many times you have to do a lot of research to understand what is the root cause. All these are skills, right? So hi highlight those skills and talk about the no theoretically part of what you know in Salesforce that you have gained this knowledge. You've learned this, this is something you're interested in. These are the skills you have augmented, which are not core skills force, but will definitely add a lot of value when you plug what you are, what you've learned in Salesforce, right? And try to talk at it, uh, combine those two. And if you've thought this through in your head, 
during an interview, if you are able to present that this is what I'm looking for, this is how I'm trying to chart out my next year or next couple of years of career growth. I want to be in Salesforce. I've I've learned the technology proactively. I've got these skill sets which can be now applied in a Salesforce context. Uh, it becomes a good compelling story, right? It it shows a person who's thought through what they want to do. They put in effort to learn that, and they know. Uh, certain things theoretically, they have got that knowledge, and obviously the skill set from what they have from a prior project experience. Now, if I see all that in totality, it speaks to a great attitude, right? And it's definitely potentially someone companies would love to invest in, saying, "Okay, we may not put you as say a support lead, but maybe a support uh, developer working with a support lead who will give you guidance." But hey, with person who is thinking through and preparing for their career in this fashion, will probably do learn pretty fast, and maybe in a year become a support lead. Right, so think of it from that perspective, and uh, don't think of okay, I don't know this. Think of what I know and how I'm going to bridge that gap. And uh, with that, I think you should be able to uh, put a very good, compelling story of uh, where you want to be, and uh, of course, uh, suitable to what the role requirement is. If they are okay with a person who's not does not have a lot of prior Salesforce experience, I, I don't think it'll be a tough sell. And next question is how much importance is given to certification during selection process? Uh, I think it's more given during the during the shortlisting process. So if I'm looking at a resume and I want to see whether I want to interview someone, and two resumes being equal, one person being certified, I'll start with the person being certified. Now during the interview, uh, certification is is more from to check your theoretical knowledge and know what you know. Um, but what really is being tested is, have you been able to apply that knowledge? It helps, especially if you got multiple certifications and and you know these uh, certain areas well. It it's good, but the reason it's diluted today is especially if you look over the last couple of years, especially during during this time, a lot of people have got a lot of certifications, so it's not a differentiator. It becomes more of a problem if you say I have zero certifications. I've worked five years in Salesforce because. There are going to be less people with with that sort of a, uh, a profile. It's more important to make sure you have some certification. But having the certification does not say that you are so much better because a lot of people have certification. So it's not a huge differentiator. It's probably if you don't have, it's more of a uh, something they may think about. And again, it's more focused during the uh, interview shortlist stage. Any other questions? Okay. Looks like I think we are uh, um, at the end of uh, all the questions. Um, thank you for all the feedback. I saw some really kind comments, uh, so thank you. Uh, well, thank thanks, you. thanks, Praveen. Uh, yeah, and uh, thank you to the entire New Delhi uh, user group team. Appreciate it. Thank you, Prashant. If Q and A is completed, we can wrap up the session. Sure, absolutely. Just uh, wait for a few seconds. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to. Think quickly, otherwise we'll wrap it up. Okay. Okay, I think we can we can wrap it up. Thank you once more. Thanks everyone for joining and um, spending your weekend time on this. So appreciate it. Have a great rest of the weekend and stay safe.